your Bible today, Genesis chapter number 1, <clears throat> Genesis chapter 1, and so grateful for um, the singing, the songs, and the musicians, and everything that goes on uh, to make those things possible. I appreciate uh, uh, the work doing to make it live streamed and make it uploadable and all those technological terms that Brother Will and Levi and other ones do, and uh, thank you for... Um, uh, Brother Kevin helps to get reproduced on CDs and things, and um, uh, I just uh, I've taken it for granted how much uh, people do to make uh, what we do accessible and possible. And just thank the Lord for you, and I know you do it for Jesus. But I'm sure grateful uh, that we can be laboring together. Genesis chapter one and verse number twenty-eight. It says, uh, and God blessed them. Sorry, Brother Will, I told you verse thirty-one, but uh, I want to read down to it. And God blessed them and said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. And every beast of the earth, and every fowl of the air, and everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. All God's people said, let's be seated, we'll pray. God, in heaven, we've already uh, uh, surely thanked you for uh, meeting with us, and I pray that uh, you would make... Um, uh, this uh, word that I'm about to preach be um, uh, a blessing and be uh, uh, just a filling for our minds and our hearts. God, I pray that as we uh, bow to worship and to receive your word, Lord, you'd receive our offerings, our praise, our um, attitude. I pray this would be a sweet place, Lord, as uh, people come into it. And we're not, we're not sweet on our own. We've lost that, and uh, we've lost... Um, that goodness that uh, you've declared to be good here in this verse. And so I pray that as we look at your word and contemplate, Lord, um, we would re be reminded of what you made us for, and uh, we would be uh, remorseful, and then, Lord, we'd be rejoicing uh, how you've made us again. God, I uh, love you. I pray that you would accomplish your work. Lord, if there's someone here that doesn't know you today, they'd call in your name. Father, those that do know you, we would rejoice in that name, and we would return to that name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Everything that God had made, the Bible declares very good. I am a, a literalist in all the words of Scripture. I don't think I know everything about the Bible, but I'm sure trying to, to um, put it together and learn it, and um, even more than learn it, I need to live it. Y'all say amen to that? I mean, you can live it without knowing everything about it, and... Uh, uh, but w when we see these words create and made, I do think there's a difference there. It's in this passage how he made us and then he created us. And, and I, I don't think that um, uh, God saw what, what Satan was and called him good. Uh, obviously, he's already fallen and very shortly he's uh, uh, deceiving the world. And the world at that time was just Adam and Eve. Uh, what a simple place, right? Uh, just everything there and, and only one law to keep, but yet... Uh, there was uh, enough room, <clears throat> enough um, uh, uh, just uh, temptation for them to fall into that sin. But when God made everything, and that's what it says in verse 31, He saw that it was very good. At other times, God saw things it was good. Not, uh, not that you have to look at these verses, but in verse 4 of chapter 1, He saw light and said it was good. In verse 10, dry land and waters, He said it was good. Verse 12, the grass and the herbs, it was good. Verse 18, the sun and the moon, to rule over the day and the night, it was good. Verse 21, the fish and the fowl, I don't know if skunks were in there, but he saw it and he said it was good, amen. And verse 25, uh, <clears throat> the beast of the earth, it was good. And then you get down to verse 31, after uh, he's uh, crowned off this creation, and make no mistake, we are on purpose, we are not an accident evolution. We are not just a result of God beginning things with some life cell and then after all, we just appeared just out of nowhere. No, we appeared out of His mind and out of His will and out of His purpose. And we're created intentionally, intelligently, and right at the right time. And the Bible says 
he saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. It's very good. God's creation, he made us very good. That word good, we can use it in different ways to be morally good. Um, you can talk about you got the goods, you know, uh, like some supply of something. Uh, even when Bryce was singing the, the day, uh, he uh, opened that tomb for good uh, uh, and, and put away our sins for good like it's finished. It, it's, it's finalized. It's over. There's a lot of different ways we can use that word. But when God's seen it, it it's, just, it's beautiful. <clears throat> it's valuable. It's the way it should be. It's good. And that was good. You ever eat something and say, man, that was good. I had a cookie yesterday, and I'm telling you what, it was good. I, people ask for the recipe. It's the best cookie I've ever ate. In fact, I happened to make sure it was really good after four or five more. Amen. I, uh, it was good. And I said, man, that's good. Uh, there's a comparison to it, but there's also a completeness to it. And God declared in the original creation, we were created, we were good. And somebody say amen to that. What happened to us? What happened to the goodness of what God created us for? I think of, uh, uh, of the way we can uh, twist stories and, and twist realities and, and turn things upside down and, and pervert and, and totally misapply and misuse. And boy, even, I don't care if uh, who is in control of the world, if it's a human, it's not going to be good. Can somebody say amen to that? We, we lose, we've lost that, that moral compass and that, um, that uh, avenue to declare things and to, and to make things good. We've lost that. And you can see how we lost it. Everything that God saw in chapter 1, He said it was good. Look at chapter 3. And look at the first thing it tells us that man saw. Now, I'm sure Adam and Eve seen other things. Obviously, Adam saw the animals and named them. And then he saw Eve and named her, whoa, man. And, you know, he was excited when God, that's a good joke, amen, I, I like that. But he, he was excited when God brought Eve to him and uh, named her, <coughs> called her wo woman because she was taken from man. And look at Genesis 3, verse 6. The Bible says, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof. The one tree that was forbidden, that she couldn't take, shouldn't take, and Adam took it with her. Don't, not, this is not a, a, a sexist a, a message to, to bash on either one of our two genders. Can somebody say amen? But... She saw a tree. Of all the other things she could have seen, that's what she saw. Wow. The one thing that's forbidden or the one thing that can hurt us is what she saw. And that might be human curiosity. That might just be a part of our uh, free will that, that we want to investigate. And we do have a, a searching, uh, exploring uh, part of us. Uh, I don't care where it is. Uh, um, I remember um, as a kid, uh, certain rooms were off limit, and that's the ones I wanted to go to. You know what I'm saying? In Grandma's house, there was one room. Don't go in there. I like. I couldn't wait to sneak in there and see what was behind that door, man. And it was cold. That's what it was. She just didn't have the heat in there, so that's why she had it just shut. And I walked. Oh, it's cold in here. That's why. Don't go in there. Don't let the cold. I thought there was some mystery and some treasure behind that door, you know. And I know she just shut it off, so it didn't have to heat the whole house. And I, I opened the door to find out. We, we have that in us, but. Isn't it something that we were made very good and all these things that God saw that were good all around his creation and then Eve and Adam looked at the one thing that could harm them, hurt them, and they thought that was good. Isn't that something? Now that we are fallen into sin, <clears throat> how many times can we not see all the good around us or working with us and we are tempted just to see the one thing that's bad and be drawn to that, and it's going to harm us, and we think that that's what's good that we need to focus on. Just hit me today as studying this out, and that's not the, the full message, but boy, be careful what we let our eyes fixate upon. What God calls as good, we ought to call good as well. 
what God deems as valuable and good, that, that ought to be stuff that we deem as valuable and good. And instead of taking our own uh, investigation and our own conclusion, well, I think this is good. Yeah, but God didn't say that was good. Eve and Adam, they lost it. And from this one sin... Can I take you to a couple places with me? Go to Psalms chapter 14, verse number 1. These verses are re-quoted and rewritten in Romans, but I want to read them to you in Psalms. We were very good, and now the good is lost. The good's been lost because of what we sought after and what we've seen. And Psalms chapter 14 as we just follow along in this, this timeline, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. Verse 1 of Psalm 14. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No not one. We went from seeing one tree that we couldn't have to now there's none good. There's none that seeketh after him. The good that God made us for, we had lost. And when sin is finished, it bringeth forth death. Jeremiah chapter 4, would you turn here with me? Well, that's the fool preacher, and you know, we're, we're not fools. We believe in God. <clears throat> Thank the Lord that God believed in us uh, to give us an uh, opportunity to be redeemed. But Jeremiah chapter 4, talk about his own people here. It says, the, verse 21, How long shall I see the standard and hear the sound of the trumpet? For my, my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, and they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good they have no knowledge. The fellow that, that got saved Friday, I said, man, I heard something happen to you. He said, yeah, you're the second guy that asked me about that. I got saved yesterday. I said, you've been in this camp how long? Is it five, six years? And I said, and you just got saved. He said, I knew about Jesus, but I never received him. Never received him. And I said, man, I just want to apologize. I just, you, you got a, such a great personality. You're so positive and just so upbeat. And you feed us so well. I just assumed you had to be saved. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> just, uh, just took it for granted. And you know, sometimes you can sense or you can have a, a discernment. Friday afternoon uh, did um, uh, a ceremony for a couple in their marriage and and uh, the fellow had come to church here as, an, as a health aide years ago with one of our members and helped out some. And, and he'd asked me if I would, he said, I'd just like to do our ceremony uh, here. And I, I said, okay. And he told me what day. And I'm like, oh, of all days. Oh, this is a rough day. But uh, we, because of some circumstances, I just wanted to be a part and help him. And, and his, uh, his wife is a Hindu background and uh, was in Dubai when she got saved from a coworker. And I didn't know that, but, but while she was getting ready, her friend came in, and this guy came in. I mean, the biggest smile. Just, just walked in like he was as happier. I mean, imagine Will, ten times Will, okay? That's the way this guy was. If you could just imagine how bright and happy this guy was. He's like, oh, are you the preacher? And he shook my, I had a suit on, and he did. He shook my hand. Oh, brother, that's so amazing. I've heard about you. And then I really liked him, amen, you know, and he's like, I've heard so much about you. And, oh, I'm so glad. And he told me his name. And he said, do you know who I am? I said, no. And he said, well, I'm one of Mina's friends. And I got the leader to the Lord four years ago while we were at work in Dubai. I'm like, Dubai? He's like, yeah, the Lord's amazing. He's brought me to America crazy. And, and I said, where are you at? He said, I'm in Portland, Oregon. I'm like, you're in Portland? He said, yeah, man. We've been witnessing to the rioters. We've been out there giving them water, telling them about Jesus and talking to them about the... I mean, he's just like, <clears throat> literally, he was Will on 10. I, you know, and um, I, I could tell that, that um, he just had the Lord all over him. 
and he, we were doing some things and, and he said, oh, brother, thanks for sharing the word. And he, he came up with the sound and he was just he was just all about it. Now, we might not have everything discerned, but I thought that guy's got the Lord in his heart. I, I can see he's got the Lord and I didn't see it. I, I, I missed discerned about Brother John there now in, in camp. But, you know, when someone gets it and I guess when God gets them, there's a glimpse of something good that's different from everyone else. Would you say amen to that? We might not always share it or show it, and uh, you don't have to be will times 10 to, to be a, a Christian, and, but, and I just, I'm sure that uh, there's some things that uh, uh, not everyone's the same, but something different, something good happened. In this chapter of Jeremiah, we realize that even even God's people sometimes are not good. They lack a knowledge of it. They've gone away from it. Romans 3 says, There is none good, no, not one. And, and even, even now that I'm saved, I'm reminded of how ungood I am if I don't let the Lord do something in my life. Can somebody else say amen to that? We are very good in the beginning. Good was lost, and then how, how do we get back to that? Would you go with me to Hebrews chapter 6? Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6, verse number 4, it says, It is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted, what's the next phrase say? The good word of God. <clears throat> the powers of the world to come. Verse 4 and 5 are setting the stage in this passage of somebody who's been redeemed, somebody who has been reclaimed, somebody who has been made over because of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Word, the, the Holy Gift, and now they've got a holy enlightening. Their, their eyes are open because they've seen Jesus. Yeah. Yesterday, one of the speakers was talking to us about, you know, how do we know anything about God? And, and I was in the back saying, the Bible? Duh, the Bible? And some of the guys yelled out scripture, the Bible, and other people said the preacher. And I'm like, yeah, that's a good answer too. Hey, man, he ought to be telling us about God. And, and the speaker said, no, that's not it. He said, you can have the Bible and read it all the way through and not get anything about God until you have the Holy Spirit that comes through receiving Jesus Christ. You all say amen to that? And I'm like... Wow, I'm glad he came and straightened me out. I needed that. Amen. That was good. That was a good word. And, and uh, you know, this Holy Ghost and this good word, that's what allows us to get back to being good. I'll say amen to that. I, I need to be remade. I need to be renewed, even in this flesh, from time to time, from the good word, because now I've got the Holy Ghost, good God, Holy Ghost in me. The good word, Hebrews 6, 5 says, you've tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 7, it mentions this good word again. And just trying to show you that we've been made good. We've, how are we made good and, and what are we made good for? And 1 Timothy chapter 2, in verse number 1, it says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, giving of thanks be made for all men, <clears throat> for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. 
whereof, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and apostle, I speak the truth in Christ and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. This good word is that he wants everyone to come to this knowledge of him. It's not only a good word that we can get saved, but it's a good word that everyone can get saved, man. What a, what a good word. That's a good word. When I learn something from the, from a, the Bible, I'm like, man, that's a good word. I'm glad I, I needed that. But you know what? Our good was lost, but our good was found by the gift and by the Word of God. We've tasted the good Word of God. We're made to be good, and now that we've got Him, if you've accepted Jesus, you, maybe you knew about Him, but then, hey, I, I accepted Him, I, I received Him. Boy, there's a whole new world opened up that we are to be good. We are made to be good. We are a doctrine-based uh, ministry. If it's not in the Bible, man, we are trying to make sure and, and re rehearsing and we want to be in the Bible. Sometimes even to the offense of people, and, and I, I say, hey, I, it's what the Bible says. I've got to, I'm trying to, to <clears throat> follow this principle and this, this passage, and I can be wrong, and my interpretation can be wrong, but the Bible's not. Amen? And the Bible is correct. If, if I mess it up, that can happen, but we are all about this good word, and and what does this good word tell us about, tell us what to do? It tells us we have to have a good conscience. A good conscience. I don't think our conscience should be our guide, but I think our conscience should be our check. I think our conscience should be somewhat in, in motion to measure and to rethink. What did you just say? What did you just do? What reaction did you just have? And buddy, my conscience, <clears throat> I don't want it to be seared. I want it to be re uh, just, just sensitive. Sometimes a conscience can be seared where it, it doesn't sense what we're doing, and that's a sign of the end times. But the Bible tells us about having a good conscience. Yeah. Do you know that? Yeah. that? Being able to lay your head down at night because the God who created you to be good restored you so that you can be good and now reminds you, you're not good right now. You're not being good. What, what do you need to do? What, what can we, how can we remedy this? And thankfully, God does have some remedy. Amen? Amen. If we confess it, he'll, he'll remove it. If we come to him with it, if we humble ourselves, he'll help it. But just look at this word. Go to 1 Peter chapter 3. Let me help you to have a good conscience toward God. <clears throat> we, are, we were made to be good. And this third point, we're made to have a good conscience. 1 Peter chapter 3. Can we just start reading in verse 14? And we'll get on down to two points here, and you'll get two for one on this passage, okay? So it's, if, you, if you haven't turned to other ones, turn here. You can stay here for a second. You get two for one at this passage. 1 Peter 3, verse 14. But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye. Be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Having a, what's it say? A good conscience. Whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it's better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, that the just for the unjust. You know, Christ did that. He wasn't deserving of dying on the cross. He wasn't found guilty of any crime <clears throat> they accused him of. It says he did that, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God weighed in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, 
Now, baptism doesn't save you from your sin. Baptism has to be prerequisite of belief before you can get baptized. Did you know that? You can't get baptized until you first believe. And what, what hinders me to be baptized? And the uh, uh, Ethiopian eunuch asked Philip, and Philip said, you've got to believe. You've got to believe Jesus is the Son of God. John 3, 36 says, He that believeth hath everlasting life. Yeah. Baptism is not what gets you saved, but it's, there's a prerequisite. But look at verse number 21. It's in parentheses. It says, Baptism, it, it, it saved eight people back in Noah's days. It's not the putting away of the filth of flesh, but what is baptism? It's the answer of a what? Yeah. A good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You want to have a, you, you're made to be good, friend. You were made very good, and then we were unmade by our sin and our choices, and then the good word of God, and thankfully the good gift of God is salvation through Jesus Christ. Let's lift him up and tell everyone we can, and then he wants you to have a good conscience. The good conscience comes from your behavior, your conversation in Christ. A fella came to me and asked some Bible questions this week, and he was trying to convince somebody else about what baptism is in the Bible. And uh, I did a Bible study with one of his friends, and his friend was telling him, he said, man, you need to get this, because he's, he's really grown up in church his whole life, grew up in a Baptist church, Baptist preachers in his family, and he said this, I never thought I needed to know the verses I just know I was right because I believe what everyone told me. Now, that's a scary place to be. Thankfully, I think he's been told right, but he said, I went to try to prove it to someone else, and I had nothing to say. And I realized, he's a young guy, he said, I, I, I need to know this book. He said, can you help me? And, and uh, I was showing him some things. He messaged me the next day. He said, Preacher Stout, you're not going to believe this. I was at work. We had to be at this place where I was just sitting and, and, and uh, idle watching over uh, 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 something, and I had some time, so I pulled up my notebook, and I was just studying my notes. And the guys that were on work with me, they said, hey, what are you doing? He said, well, I'm just reviewing my notes. And he said, what's your notes about? And he said, well, I'm about baptism. And he said, I got talking to my buddies at work, and they're like, man, I, what, what's that mean? And uh, what, what about this salvation? Is it eternal or can you lose it? He said, Preacher Stout, those same verses you told me, I got to use tonight at my work. And man, he was all excited and he was, he was thrilled. And he said his buddy told him, he said, man, I knew you were different from everybody else at work. But I didn't know why. Now I know. Now watch. <clears throat> Our behavior, whether we know the Bible, whether we're fully studied up on Scripture, there ought to be a difference in our behavior once we get Jesus Christ. Can somebody say amen? And I told him, I said, hey, when you're trying to convince someone, you can't just tell them and use illustrations. You've got to show them what the Bible says. He's like, well, I told them this and that. I'm like, well, that's true, but that's not going to convince them. If they believe the Bible, the Bible will convince them. Your illustration and what you believe, it's right, but just by chance you happen to be right. You grew up being right, not knowing it. You need to know what this book says so that you know you're right. Amen? A good conscience toward God is your behavior, but it's also baptism. Hey, believer, you've been saved. Hey, do what you need to do. Let's get, let's get in the water. I know that there's some uh, uh, process uh, of um, making sure of your faith. And if, if things were done according to God's plan, every kid would get saved and will get baptized before they're ever into the clutches of the devil's temptation and sin. I'll say amen to that. If things happened the way God intended, your kids would get saved at home, you'd lead them to the Lord, and then they would follow the Lord in baptism because they would just know nothing different than Jesus Christ and Him crucified. But that's, we don't live in a good world, do we? We don't live in a perfect world. And when you're restored by the good word, man, a good conscience <clears throat> is what you need to get to. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Let me show you this verse, Ephesians chapter 2. <clears throat> it 
Excuse me. Ephesians chapter 2. Verse number 8, 9, and 10 is how you get this good gift. For by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourself. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now I know the title of the message is, We're Made to Be Good, and in the beginning that's the way God made us, but aren't you glad He created us a new heart? He, his Holy Spirit came in, <clears throat> took what was dead, and now we're created, the Bible says, unto good works. That is what your spirit that's residing in this borrowed flesh and this bought body by the Lord, we are for good works. That's what we're here for. This is not a dormitory for the sleep. This is not a, 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 a social club for the saints. <clears throat> this is a sign-up place to get busy doing the works of God and making sure they're good for His glory. Amen. That's what we're created for. That's what the church was instituted for, a place that we could do these good works. No, oh, from time to time, because of our ungood flesh, I know that some ungood can be in the midst of us. But that's not what we are created for. We're created for good works. Matthew 5, 16, Let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Titus chapter 3, verse 8 says, We be careful... We would be careful to maintain good works. It says this, a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable <clears throat> unto men. Boy, if only Adam and Eve would have maintained the garden. <laughs> Boy, if only the men who have uh, been entrusted with the ministry would maintain the good works that we're created to do. We probably wouldn't have had to start so many new churches if men would just maintain the good works that have been started. I hear it said all the time, why are we sending people as missionaries? we got a mission field right here. We shouldn't have one! Why should we have a mission field here? We should have already accomplished it all we got to send out because people here don't want it. Man, if we would just maintain good works, that's, that's what we're created for. Well, I've already done that. Maintain it. Maintain it. Keep it up. Keep it going. Our good works are what we're created for. And then the goodwill is what we're trying to find out. Romans chapter 12 talks about us finding the will of God. And it says in that chapter, it says, Romans chapter 12, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Notice it's a good will. We are created to good works, and we are to find a good will. Psalms 143, verse 10 says, Teach me to do thy will. Yeah. Psalms 122 says, Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Man, God wants us to, to be a part of that good will and to prove it out. Sometimes I, I, I'm figuring out God's plan as I go, but God's will I can know and I can do it. I can give thanks. I can pray always. I can seek the lost. I can be pure and abstain from fornication. I can, I can redeem the time and mend the goodwill. That's what we're made for. We are made to do good. It shouldn't be a, a hard thing. That's what we're designed to do. <clears throat> I've got a little Honda Civic, and I grew up on a farm, and, and uh, uh, my first vehicle was a truck, and my first... Uh, the uh, thing I drove was a tractor. I'm used to vehicles being able to go through mud. Can somebody say amen? I mean, that's what a tractor is made for. Trucks are made for mud. And But I couldn't wait when I got my four-wheel drive Ranger. I was looking for the first mud hole I could get to, man. 
There was a road uh, down the street, and when it rained in Brown County, that, that had some like some swells in the in the road. You know, like the, the middle road was higher than the, where your wheels drove. I love to get on that road and get going about 40 miles an hour and look like I parted the Red Sea. You know what I'm talking about? Just water. <clears throat> I washed my truck on that road. Amen. That's where I'd go wash my truck. It would fly over, and I'd like, that's what a truck's made for. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm in a Honda Civic now, if you didn't remember that part of it. And every once in a while, I'll think, oh, this car can go through that. And I'll take a run at it and try to... And it just bogs down. I'm like, oh, man, a front-wheel drive little Honda Civic. It, I'll try to make it go through the mud. And the other day when the snow hit on our uh, driveway, my wife was trying to get out, and the car was coming, so she slowed down to not make a run at the end of our driveway where the, you know, the snow plows shove all that snow. And she got stuck right at the end of our driveway, called me, and I'm like, just stay there. I'll get you out. So I came there, and, and she was trying to get Taryn to practice, and so... She got in my car, I got in her truck, and Judson and Elliot are in the truck. I'm like, hang on, boys, we're going to get out of this. And I'm rocking it back and forth trying to get out, and I, uh, we're stuck, man. We are just stuck. And then I, it got a hold of the grass, and it pulled my truck side, or, or her or SUV sideways into the ditch. Now I can't even get out, and I buried it in the ditch. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, it is, I'm done. And so I was thinking, who? I called the farmer down the street. I said, man, do you have any way to pull me out? I think I'm going to need a tractor. He's let me come check you out. He comes in his truck and hooks me up, pulls me right out. I'm like, oh, praise the Lord. About that time, my wife was coming back in my car, and I'm like, honey, I, just hang I'm going to drive around, turn around. And by the time I turned around, she had tried to drive my car through the same spot and got my car stuck at the same spot that we just got the truck pulled out. I'm like, you're done, babe. Just get out of that car. You're, we pulled it out with hers, and it was okay. But I'm like, man, that little car, it, I, I'm trying to use it for something it's not made to do. It's not made to plow through snow. It's not made to get through deep water. You know what you were made for? You were made to do good. You've been saved in this room. You are made to be good. That's what God has designed for you to be. It ought not to be a, an oddity for us to do good to someone else. It ought to be the normal what we're looking to do, I hope you don't mind this, we're at the camp, and the camp, the workers, they haven't been, I don't know how much they've been paid, but they haven't had any events since the last camp in July that, of, of magnitude. The camp's budget, I think about maybe two-thirds of it is filled at the camp in the summer. And I know last year they made a plea for some donations and some help. They had to lay off everybody at the camp. Our event of this journey of Jesus, they said, was the first overnight event they've had since last August. I don't know if the workers are being paid, how much they are. And uh, bro, Scott and Terry were talking with the office manager, and, and Scott said, man, I think we ought to just give them a tip or something. And I, I said... Let me just go get some money from the, the, the ATM, the church. We're just going to give them, we're just going to give them some money. Amen. And so, you know, there was five workers there, and I went up to the first guy. I said, "Hey, this is just from our church." He said, "No, no, I, I, I he's thank you, thank you so much." The lady in the kitchen, she said, "Thank you for being so generous. You guys are always good, but thank you so much." It shouldn't be an oddity. It shouldn't be a one-a-year event that we do something that's just good. And I'll tell you this, when we don't do good, that's what everyone else remembers and recognizes. Y'all say amen? Even among ourselves, even among our community, if we don't do something good, that's what everyone else watches and sees. Boy, that wasn't very good. I'm like, well, we're just people. We're just, we're just people who are created to be good. That's why they expect it. That's why we should show it. We ought to be good. There's a good fight, too. Would you go to 2 Timothy 4? There's a good fight.
It's a good fight because even though we're made to be good, we've got something against us, don't we? We've got the world, we've got the flesh, we've got the devil. We've got some things that work against us. We've got our pride, our, pur- our own selfish purpose. There are some things that work against us. In 2 Timothy 4, verse number 7, Paul says, I fought a what? Good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. Boy, don't you ever think it's, even though we're created and we should be good, don't ever think it's going to be uh, without a fight. Now it's a fight we can win. Yeah. We've been made to get through that mud. Yeah. We've been made to get through that snow. We've got four-wheel drive. Come on. We are ready, but there's a good fight. It's a good fight. 1 Timothy chapter number 1 says, Holding. Holding, first one, uh, chapter 1, verse 18 of 1 Timothy. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before thee, that thou mightest by them war a good warfare. Holding faith. Man, don't let go of it. Hang on to it. And a good conscience. There it is again. Which some, having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck. It's a, good, it's, a, it's a good fight, and there's a war, and that's what you're made to, to fight and to, and to be a part of. 1 Timothy 6, verse 12 says, <clears throat> Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give charge. Man, lay hold on it. Grab a, keep a hold. Don't let anybody loosen your grip. And then 2 Timothy 2, 3, it says, Endure hardness as a good soldier. Yeah. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. God made us to be good. He put us inside of a good fight. Give us the, the good word of God to fuel us and to, to teach us what in His will is. Buddy, there's some endurance. There's, it, is, it is a war. We can win the war. God's already won the victory. We're just in the middle of finishing up the fight. But don't forget, it's a good one. And finally, boy, I hope that when it's all said and done, you have a good finish. Amen. Matthew 25, you want to turn there? Let's look at this last one together. Matthew 25. God made us to be good. In the beginning, He saw that we were very good. It was our own eyes that got us away from Him. It was our own actions that removed us from His presence. And our fellowship can be uh, hindered because of our own sin. And all there's plenty of excuses. And it's a fight. It's a fight. But Matthew 25, look at verse 21. This parable is given about a Lord with servants, and he gave entrusted talents to them. And if you don't know the passage, one took his talents and invested them. And when the Lord came back, he, he, had, he had multiplied what the Lord had given to him. And he that had five had gotten ten. He that had two, in verse 20, uh, uh, 22, they gathered two more. And verse 21, when that, that Lord of the servant found him, he said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. <clears throat> thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Verse 23, His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Oh, I hope that when we get done and we finish what God has made us for, and what He's re-say, re- redeemed us for, that He can say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Amen. That's what I designed for you to be. Yeah. That's what I gave you my good word so you could be. That's the fight I put you in so you could fight the good fight, and well done, thou good and faithful servant. Wow, I hope we get a good finish. I've had a lot of good starts in my life, and I haven't had a lot of good finishes. You know what I'm saying? I was trying to clean up things yesterday and down the basement. Oh, my goodness. And uh, as I was down there, I thought, I just seem like I'm spinning my wheels. I had a good idea. I had a good start. I need a good finish. 
And when my wife came home and she came down, she said, man, the basement looks good. I'm like, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Got a good accommodation, or a, good rec- uh, 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 a good statement from her. I can't think of the word I want to say. Good commendation. And she said, man, the basement looks good. I'm like, thanks, babe, just for you. And you know what? Jesus says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. We're going to say, thank you, Lord. Amen. We did it for you. You're so good. Amen. You're so good, God. We say that all the time. God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. But you know what? He made us to be good. Believer, we're getting ready to move to some higher ground. Church is going to hopefully get out of the, uh, the lowlands and head up higher. Boy, I hope that we can bring some goodness with us. Hope that we can be good. Someone comes in, we can be good to them. Someone who's already in, we can be good to them. That's what we were created for. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God, thank you for your good word. Lord, taste and see that the Lord is good, the Bible says. I pray that we would live up to our created purpose. God, help us. Lord, there be some goodness from us. Not for any of our own glory, but Lord, because of what you've placed in us, that they could see our good works, see our light, and glorify our Father which is in heaven. God, thank you for um, this day. Help me to do something good today. Lord, help me to fight the fight against my ungood flesh, my ungood selfishness. Lord, I pray that I could be poured out and spilled out for you and you would be a good, sweet-smelling offering in your, in your nostrils. Lord, thank you for um, creating us to be good. As the piano begins to play, friend, if you're not sure you're saved, God's so good and he already died for you. He already paid the price for you. Christian, if you've been having some <clears throat> conscience working on you, man, that's not good what I've been doing. That's not good what I've been saying. That's not good what I've been showing. Why don't you just fight the good fight? Confess it to Him. Get back on the good path. Get back on the good way. Lord, help us to have a good conscience today, Father, that when we get done with the day that we can lay our head down at night and say, hey, I just tried to do what was good today. Thank you, God, for putting that in my purpose and my plans and my uh, agenda. If it weren't for you, I'm undone. I don't seek after righteousness. God, help us. We love you. We come to learn of you today and live for you uh, tomorrow. And just bless the invitation.